So today we're gonna to use cardboard to make a prototype that allows us to make a silicone mold so you can make an entire patio out of custom pavers. The pattern that I'm using consists of two different shapes that each have five sides. Pretty much any 2D pattern would work for this project, but I like this one because it reminds me of a turtle. I'm gonna start by making a prototype for each one of these two shapes out of cardboard. I cut up some boxes so that I'd have a whole bunch of nice flat sheets. I find that when I'm drawing shapes that fit in a pattern, it's helpful to draw them within a grid. I'm using a three inch offset grid and I'm just highlighting the points on that grid so that I can draw straight lines to make the shapes. Now I can use a metal ruler and a box cutter to cut out the shapes. I want the top panel of the prototype to be nice and sturdy, so I thought two layers of cardboard would do the trick. So I traced the first shapes onto another piece of cardboard and cut out these second pieces just slightly smaller than the first pieces by about an eighth of an inch. I glued the layers together, making sure not to use too much glue because that would moisten the cardboard too much and make it crinkle. I cut one inch wide strips of cardboard that I'll use to give the prototypes thickness. I'm going to use my hot glue gun to glue these strips to the underside of the cardboard shape templates. I worked my way around the perimeter first and then added a whole bunch of smaller pieces on the inside just to make the whole thing nice and strong. Once I had these cardboard shapes nice and sturdy, I applied some joint compound that's used to finish interior drywall. This is a cheap ready mix plaster that most importantly is really easy to sand. I just spread it on with a putty knife like I was frosting a cake. Not that I would frost a cake with a putty knife, or maybe I would. I'm not trying to get it perfectly smooth, I'm just trying to cover up all the cardboard just under an eighth of an inch thick. Once that first layer had fully cured, I used some drywall sanding screens to sand this rough coat fairly smooth. Just trying to knock down the high points and get it relatively even for a second and final coat. I frosted them again, this time really focusing on pushing the plaster into the low points of the first coat. Now that I have a nice thick coat, I can sand the whole prototype nice and smooth. Joint compound sands really quickly, and I was able to round over the edges just a little bit. I wiped off all the excess dust and then coated them with some Minwax polyacrylic. I did two coats with a light sanding of 400 grit sandpaper in between. While I had the polyacrylic out, I also coated some two inch wide strips of cardboard that I'm going to use for the outer perimeter of the silicone mold. Mold. The mold for the silicone mold. Now you probably don't need to do this step, but I've had prototypes float up on me when I poured silicone on top of them. So I just drilled a hole through a piece of melamine, ran some wire through the cardboard so they could secure the prototype with wire in addition to hot gluing it down to the melamine. Again. Hot glue's probably enough, but I'm just wanting to play it safe. I sealed it up pretty good with the hot glue, but I don't want the inside of the prototype to fill up with the liquid silicone, so I just used some latex call to make sure I had a waterproof seal between the prototype and the piece of melamine. I glued down those two inch wide strips of cardboard and was ready to mix some silicone. I'm using Moldstar 30 from Smooth On. It's a two part liquid silicone that I've used for a whole bunch of concrete and epoxy projects. Now, the stuff isn't cheap, but once you make the molds, you can use them over and over again. And I'm gonna make an entire patio out of this one pair of molds. So basically, I'm making the tools that allow me to make the big and valuable project. In this case, a whole patio. I let the silicone cure for about 10 hours, and then I cut away the hot glue, peeled back the cardboard, and pulled off the silicone. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the prototypes were relatively intact. There was a little bit of plaster crumble where I cut away the hot glue that secured them to the melamine, but with one more quick patch around the bottom, I could make a whole nother set of molds exactly the same as the first set. But I wanted to get started on the concrete parts first. Now, pretty much any off-the-shelf concrete mix will work for this project. I like to get a little fancy though, and I'm going with sort of a white to green gradient for these pieces. So I'm using Quickcrete countertop mix in white, and once I ran out of that, I use another countertop mix also in white. I'm adding in some green pigments and just mixing the concrete mix until it's about the consistency of lumpy oatmeal. I poured it right into the silicone molds that I had already rinsed and cleaned out and kind of just like tapped and shook the molds a little bit to help it settle and get out most of the bubbles. 
I let the concrete cure about 12 hours before removing the pavers from the mold and using a sacrificial old chisel that I definitely do not use for woodworking to knock off the edges along the bottoms. I rinsed out the molds and was ready to mix in the second batch. Now, I want the green color to be different in every pair of pavers because I want this kind of mottled gradient where it looks more sort of worn over time and less like a computer rendering. But if you're like one of those people that wants everything to be exactly uniform, then you just want to measure out your concrete, your water, and your pigments just so you can keep things nice and consistent. I added more green pigment to the second batch and I got greener pavers. Also, you totally don't need this, but if you have a hammer drill that has a hammer only function, you can vibrate out all the bubbles really quickly. These molds are super durable and they pour and demold a new set of pavers every morning and every night. These pavers aren't that big, so I don't need any rebar or reinforcement in them. And if I wanted to conserve concrete, I could take the broken off edge crumble and use that as a filler to take up some volume and recycle those little fragments. Now because I'm vibrating the molds well, you won't see those fragments on the surface because the smaller particles get vibrated down to the bottom of the molds which ends up as the top of the paver. But if I did want to take the time to grind them down, you would see sort of a terrazzo-like appearance. If you want to make the pavers more water resistant and more stain resistant, there's plenty of concrete sealers that you can brush onto the top of the pavers. This is going on a patio where wine will be drunk, so I thought a sealer was called for. Now it'll be about another two to three weeks before I have enough pavers to do the entire patio, but I'm really liking the color gradients that I'm getting so far. I'll show the patio install in a future video along with a bunch of other landscaping projects. That's really not that hard. You lay down some sand and gravel, pack it down a little bit, make sure it's reasonably level, and then just place the pavers on top just like this. So what I like about this project is we take a real common waste material like cardboard and use that as a prototyping tool to make a reusable silicone mold you're only really limited by your understanding of geometry. And I know some people will say, well, you only can only do two pavers at a time. Well, these prototypes are still good. The silicone mold making process didn't harm them at all. So you can make another set of molds. Now, the cost prohibitive factor is the cost of silicone. So that's just you managing your time of doing multiple pavers in a single concrete pour versus the upfront cost of the silicone material. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe and, uh, you know, post some patterns that you would like to see me do on Instagram and tag me in it and I'll see if I can give them a shot.